Hi and welcome to session 3 of this topical series on the end times. Uh, my name is Luke and today I'll be sharing about 7 practical steps in approaching the study of the end times, some uh, important dates in history as well as some uh, key books in the Bible to kickstart off this journey of studying the end times. So let's just jump right in. The first step in approaching the end times is to set your heart to it, to posture yourself in receiving from the Lord. The end times topic may seem a bit overwhelming uh, and there are things that you have to relearn, there are things that you have to unlearn. Uh, just come before Him with the spirit of humility, come before Him with an open heart and posture yourself in receiving from the Lord because that's what ultimately matters. The second step is to gather detailed information from the Bible and the Bible has to be the ultimate benchmark of, of what the truth is, of what, the, of what God is going to do. And every information, every detail has to be gathered from the Bible, right? Because this is the very Word of God that He has given to us. There are at least 150 chapters in the Bible pertaining to the end times, which is almost twice as many scriptures pertaining to the second coming as compared to the first coming of Jesus. So this is the second step, gather detailed information from the Bible. The third step is to develop clarity. Be diligent, be intentional, set a simple five-year plan in, in, in studying this end time guide. Uh, set charts, mind maps, things that will help you in gaining clarity. Uh, if you are doing this together as a team or with a community of people, uh, dialogue with one another, wrestle with God and even engage your heart with Him as you study this topic, as you read the Word, for that is where you gain greater clarity. The fourth step is to develop a personal conviction. Paul exhorts us in Ephesians 4.14 that we have to have that conviction so that we will not be tossed about to and fro, carried by every wind of doctrine or by the trickery of men. That's why we need that personal conviction. It will help us to withstand uh, other opinions that may not be uh, the complete truth from the very Word of God. So fourth is to develop personal conviction. And how do we develop conviction? Which This is the fifth step, which is to pray. Simply praying, engaging your heart with God, telling Him that this is what you want, even meditating on the Word. And as you pray, as you engage your heart, as you wrestle with Him, that's where God will give you even greater clarity, understanding and that conviction. Bathe the study of end times with prayer and birth the understanding of the end times through prayer. The next step is to simply respond. Conviction has to give rise to a response. Response is now, change takes time. And if we have a wrong attitude of, of we have time, we don't have to study this now, eventually it may lead to passivity, it may lead to lukewarmness. And if we keep hearing this on and on without responding, eventually our hearts will become dull. So, that, so that's why it's so vital to respond, to respond to Him. Last but not least, the seventh step is to be the voice. As we gain clarity, as we gain understanding, as we read through the Word, as we pray and have, the, have, and have that conviction in our hearts, it has to give rise in speaking it forth to those who have yet to hear. And God is calling forth ones, He's looking for voices, ones who would stand in the gap, ones who would speak forth His very heart so that the church will be ready, so that many who have not heard the message or who have not had the opportunity to hear what God is saying, will be able to hear what God is doing and what God is saying in this time and season before Jesus returns. So these are seven steps in approaching the end times. Next, I'll be moving on to some important key dates in history. And they are important in studying because many of these biblical prophecies have dual fulfillments. These partial fulfillments happen around these dates in the past which gives us a foreshadow of the ultimate fulfillments of these prophecies at the end of the age. These end time events will be multiplied in a greater intensity both in the positive and the negative in greater dimensions, in many dimensions. So there are three dates I'll be going through here. The first is 722 BC where it talks about the invasion of the northern kingdom of Israel by Assyria. Next is 586 BC which talks about the invasion of the Jewish people by the Babylonian army led by King Nebuchadnezzar which led to the deportation and captivity of the Jewish people for 70 years. And the last date is AD 70 which talks about the destruction of the temple and of Jerusalem by Emperor Titus of the Roman Empire which led to the diaspora all the way until 1948 where Israel was once again re-established as a nation. So these are three important dates to take note. 
Next, we'll be moving on to some key books in the Bible uh, related to the end times. As previously mentioned, there are at least 150 chapters in the Bible pertaining to the end times. And today, in this session, I'll be running through a few key passages in both the Old Testament and the, in the New Testament to kickstart your journey in the study of the end times. So in the Old Testament, there's the book of Daniel, Isaiah, Joel, as well as Zechariah 12 to 14. And in the New Testament, we have Matthew 24 to 25, Mark 13, Luke 21, 1st to 2nd Thessalonians and the book of Revelation. So today we have run through seven steps in approaching the end times, some key important dates in history, as well as some key books in the Bible on this journey that you are joining us on. So in the next session, we'll be talking about some positive and negative events and personalities surrounding the end times. So stay tuned and see you. Thank you.